Well, this is a different kind of video than the ones that I usually do. Since this is a new channel, I thought of experimenting with the kind of content I post. So home labs have been a big thing in the last several years. With the price of hardware dropping and easy picks of places like Facebook Marketplace, it's easier than ever to run your own little server and self-host your own services. Be it an ad blocker like Pi-hole or home automation like Home Assistant or HomeBridge, or a complete multi-disc NAS setup. My main setup has been a tiny Intel Nuke that runs smaller services like all the ones I mentioned and a dedicated 10 gig Mammoth with multiple RAID arrays of SAS as as well as solid state drives. The thing that is common between both is the hypervisor Proxmox. Proxmox has been my go-to hypervisor for several years now and well, running a server bare metal it's so 2010. That said, Proxmox released a major update last month with Proxmox 8 and I'm gonna be upgrading my nuke to that. Since it's been out for a few weeks and the world hasn't exploded, I believe it's safe to do so and that's what we're gonna do. With the power of post-processing, I can show you all of it in the next two minutes. So I have logged into Proxmox remotely, although their documentation suggests explicitly not to do that and suggests using KVM to access the node direct. I'm gonna do it anyway. I trust my home network. Almost. You'll notice that I'll shut down all the containers and virtual machines to prevent any conflicts. I understand that you can't really do that in a production setup, but then if you're a system administrator upgrading a production setup, you shouldn't really be following a video made by a newbie to do that. I have already run the apt update and app upgrade commands. So if you are running Proxmox 7.4.15, you'll already have an upgrade script that checks for possible conflicts or issues. You can run it with the command pve728 space dash full. I'll have all the commands in the description for you folks to copy and paste. I do that too. Eh, I don't. We see that there's one warning and no errors. The warning is about cluster having less quorum. I'm not running a cluster, although I used to, so I can safely ignore that. Next, we update source.list with new Debian repositories. So Bullsai becomes bookworm. Debian couldn't have made it no array. Then I cat the same file to see if it actually changed, cause I have trust issues with operating systems and my ability to type the right commands. That checks out so we can run apt update again to download new package lists for Debian bookworm. And lastly, apt disk upgrade. Time to get some coffee. Yes, I'd like to install all the new things that I haven't really read about. Just kidding, or am I? I'm gonna speed up the video through the install process, cause you guys can cherish it on your own computers when you do it. Then it will show you the change list. You can choose to read through all of it, or if you like living life on the edge like me, just type Q. Then we choose a keyboard layout, just in case the install took too long and you moved to say France where they use a different layout. I'm still here, so English US works for me. Am I okay to restart services? Yes, since all my VMs and containers are currently turned off. Similar questions about updating configuration files. I'm gonna update all of them, since I want the latest and greatest, but you might want to be mindful about what you choose. And now the node will restart, hopefully with Proxmox 8 and Debian 12. As we can see, the version of Proxmox has been updated on the console to 8.0.3, but I'm gonna run command pve version just to confirm that. Yep, that confirms it as Proxmox 8.0.3, which was our goal for this video. If you liked this video, I would really appreciate a like and if you subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching.